Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more EAFC 24 here today on the channel. We're going to be starting a brand new season of my Manchester United career mode, season 3, episode 1. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Alrighty, we're back with a new season of the Ultimate Difficulty Tactical Only Career Series. We have a whopping 262 million in the bank to improve this team. The board isn't the most confident uh, uh, with us as we have yet to win a Champions League or a Premier League title. We have won two trophies. We won the FA Cup and the Carabao in Season 1. Last year, unfortunately, we had, th I think we had three runners-up medals which was really quite disappointing. So here is the team. We're playing a 5-3-2. We'll look to bring in some more additional reinforcements in this first summer transfer window. A centre-back uh, probably could do with a midfielder, as Casemiro probably is just a little bit too old now. But here is the team. Frankie De Jong, 92 rated. Rashford, Fernandez, both at 92. Courtois at 90. He's our goalkeeper. He's been for the past couple of seasons. He has been really, really solid for us. Dusan Flavic has rocketed up to 89 rating. Same with Martinez at a surprising 87. And then we're going to have the first couple of matches of the Premier League. So hopefully we can try and win the Premier League and uh, go far in the Champions League. Or otherwise we might simply get sacked. All right, so I have transfer listed Tony Cruz. Picked him up for free last year. Trips and Smalling looks like he'll be going out. The board uh, transfer listed Rafael Varane for whatever reason, but uh, he's going to be probably going. He's 33 now turning. Okay, so we have 234 million pounds, which is, well, that's the current budget. The initial budget was 262. We have 28 million pounds on the wage so we do have quite an extensive budget that's even without bringing any players in so I think firstly um, there's a couple players I really like the look of here Rafael Leal, Osserman, Hernandez, Tonali so I think we might look to bring in a center back eventually I think we might bring in a midfielder and maybe a left back also Neymar and Son or on the free agents list, so we could even get them. All right, so I think the person to replace Casemiro is going to be Sandro Tonali. He's 25, he's 89 overall. He's been playing in the Premier League for the last four seasons, so he's Premier League proven, and I think it would be sensible and realistic for us to sign him. Now, I don't particularly want to give them Casemiro in return, so we'll launch a 90 million pound bid. Eddie Howe wants it to be more. Uh, if I could keep it under 100 mil, that would be more beneficial to us. 113. 105? That's a lot, but he's currently 25 years of age. We could realistically have Tenali for once we release some players um, for the next seven seasons. So it's going to be worth it. And then we might look to move out Casemiro. I really like him. He's gone down one rating, I believe. But he's 33. He's getting a little bit too old. I think we bought him for 70 million from Madrid. So having him for like, what, three, four seasons has been pretty good. So we'll need to just release some Academy products and... We might need to let some of these transfer list players go. Anthony's handed a transfer request. He won't sign a contract. And Regalon as well. Onana is currently on loan at Madrid. So, are there some players here that I probably should just let go? Yeah, so Gore can go. I was just checking who was on the transfer list. Schola can go as well. He's 21 at 86. He isn't good enough. A lot of these real-life players just aren't going to hit their potential. Like, do we really need Reese Bennett? He's 21 at 66 overall. We're better off just straight-up releasing him. So we can sign those two players. I don't want to wait for actually getting, like, a couple million pounds here and there. But anyway, let's negotiate with Newcastle. So we can get the 
services of Tanali. What's a four-year deal? Might be able to sneak a five, and we will. 108k on the wages, and now he's going to be the new Manchester United central defensive midfielder. He's happy to accept 180k, but will require a signing on bonus, and I think that's a pretty good deal. And then we'll look to try and move on Casemiro to ideally not a Premier League team or a Champions League rival, but there's only going to be a limited number of teams that are going to be able to send us offers. So apparently this was an excellent deal with the financials. Oh, and he's actually a 90 overall rated player, so I guess he went up. No? He's dropped down again. Why is that? Uh, PSG won the Champions League last year, of course. So here he is, Sandro Tanali, number 24, 25 years of age, Italian international. Should work really quite well. And we'll add Casemiro now to the transfer list and we'll try and recoup some of the money. We could maybe sell him to Newcastle, but... I'd rather not. We are playing on ultimate difficulty at the end of the day. So I think it's really not in our best interest to strengthen our rivals. Right, we need a new centre-back. And I think going for Eda Militao is a smart play. 27 years of age, 89 overall, Brazilian. I've already got a fair few. And there has been a strong connection between Real Madrid and Manchester United. I think it's quite sensible. We could go for someone like Bre uh, Bremer, Sven Botman, um, but I think I might start off going with, with Militao. And depending how much we get for Varane, we might be able to cover the costs. So, like Varane coming to United from Madrid, if we can get this deal done, Militao will be coming to United from Madrid. So, we're currently just negotiating his contract. His wage is quite high, so we'll try and offer it as a flat fee. And they're going to accept. And Edda Militao will be our new centre-back coming in to partner in the five at the back formation. Really taking Baran's game time. But here he is. Militao. Phenomenal. World-class centre-back. Former Porto defender before joining Real Madrid, of course. Only a B rating. Might have got some better deals if we weren't spending as much, but I don't know. We are playing on Ultimate, so that's fine. So we've already gone out and just absolutely splashed 200 million on two world-class players. So let's move... Militao in, and Tanali. Okay, we've received a £6 million bid for Smalling, and two offers for Varane from Chelsea and Liverpool, which I'm not going to accept. I'd rather him go somewhere else. Uh, I think I might let Trips go to West Ham for £9 million. Bro, he's 78 rated, which is crazy after three years. So it looks like if this deal goes through, Trips will be going to West Ham. Uh, Napoli launch a bid. So Kieran Trippier will be going to West Ham for £9 million. So we managed to get a £30 million loss, which is kind of bad. Probably the worst signing we've made of the career series, but so be it. Tony Cruz looks like he's going to be going to Wolves. We'll accept that £13 million bid. We paid nothing for him, except his wages, of course. Williams has been sold for 6.5 to Bournemouth. Simply not good enough to be a Manchester United player. Not high enough rated or to be in the second team. And we also will have to be quite aggressive in our transfer policy, as this could very well be our third and final season as... We do look more than likely than ever to get sacked. Chris Smalling as well potentially could be going out. Now, because money's been a little bit tight, uh, we probably can sign some pre-contract players. 33 years of age, 86 overall. Neymar, I think bringing him in, he's worth 50 mil. Neymar is signed on a pre-contract. -pre 
to really try and push us for that Premier League and Champions League. If not, he should be able to retain some of his evaluation. We might even be able to make a profit on him. So Neymar has officially joined Manchester United along with Son Heung-min as Tottenham Hotspur have allowed his contract to go. He's now signed for free to very, very sensible transfers. Here is Neymar in a Manchester United kit. 33 years of age. Now, to get the best out of him, we might need to make him an attacking midfielder because we don't play with wingers. And for Sonny, he's probably better off as a... Hmm. I'd say a cam, but maybe we have to put him as a striker. So, here's Militao. Tenali. And depending... If we sell anyone else, we might be able to bring in some more players. Sancho's currently at loan at Atalanta. Same with Onana. He hasn't gone up in overall ratings, which is surprising. But here is Son Heung Min. We sold Kobe. And now we have a match in the preseason tournament. So we're going to have to deal with that. No need to play them, but it'll be interesting to see the results in the sim. So let's quickly sim this one. So, against Bergamo, oh, we managed to pick up a 1-1 draw. Palacic with a goal, followed by Fernandez, And we have sold Regalon to Napoli for 16 million, which is a pretty good deal. Neymar can be changed to an attacking midfielder now, so let's do that. Match against Florentina, pre-season coming up after that draw. We managed to pick up a 2-0 win against the Italian side. Marcus Rashford with a brace. And we've got some deals for Varane coming in. Now, a massive deal. We have sold Rafael Varane to Brighton, would you believe, for £60 million. Obviously, not a Premier League or Champions League or European rival, really. But for £60 million, I think that's pretty good for a 33-year-old. We are simply not going to lose. And we haven't been playing his, him much because of his terrible stamina. Another friendly match coming up, this time against Real Batiste. We managed to pick up a 3-2 victory. Son picking up a late winner. Malasia and Dusan Flahovic with the other goals. And now we have a bit of money to potentially dive back into some transfers. But now we have the first match of the season against Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Looks like Casemiro could be going out. But here is the team. Dallo at left back. Martinez, Militao, uh, Kim Min, Courtois, James, De Jong, Fernandez, Tonali, Flahovic, Rashford, and then the bench as well. Mount, Casemiro, Scott McTominay, Shaw, Son, Martial. So this is going to be a massive test for us. How will we cope with a top side like Liverpool. We want to try and win the Premier League. We want to try and go far in the Champions League, making the semis last year. But here we go. At Old Trafford, first match of the season. Let's go. Ultimate difficulty, tactical view only. James wins it back. Tonali on his Manchester United debut. Fires it in to Dusan Flahovic. Back to Rashford. Frankie de Jong slaps his foot foot onto it. It's 1-0 just before the 32nd minute there. And it took me a while to realize, but this fade transition, it's, it's a, I don't know what it is. It's like it loads. It's actually apparently a bug for the PC version of FIFA for whatever reason. It hasn't even bothered me at all. I didn't even really notice it. But it's clear on the replay, but there's like, um, I feel like there's like a, a, a blending trend. It's like a, it's like a, uh, like a, a video editing transition like when they when you merge like two clips together <laughs> if you know what I mean so it's a weird sort of blend um, some people can't stand it but you probably should really get over it I didn't even really notice it doesn't bother me at all but um, not really much I can do until uh, EA sort of patches it but uh, yeah I did take no notice of it 
Second half now. 1 0 up. Uh, Liverpool on the counter attack. McAllister to Gakpo. Side passes it to Diaz. Uh, stops it past Courtois. It's 1 1 just before the 55th. Both sides not really stamping their authority on the match. Great ball from Gakpo. It's a shame we didn't pick him up earlier. For years in my United Career series, I would always pick him up, at least as a rotational player on the bench. But unfortunately, he is now a scouser through and through. 1-1, United looking to take the lead back. As Reese James goes surging forward into the box, he sides, passes it to Marcus Rashford, and he is already having an amazing start to the season. Rashi runs and celebrates with me. And so far, playing the five at the back, two strikers up top, seems to be our best formation. We were playing a 4-3-3, but we just conceded so much in that first season. Hopefully, this time around, things will be different. But we're 2-0 up. Just need to try and hold on to this lead. United looking for their third goal, and they might just get it. Tenali finds Dusan Flavic, picks up the assist. And Dusan Flavic, although we brought him in as a central defensive midfielder... He's becoming incredibly influential going forward. Got the pace. Maybe it's sometimes a little bit deceiving. You see Frankie De Jong to be the passer and you think the more aggressi aggressively uh, minded player. Well, Tonali the defensive and then sometimes they switch roles back and forth. But if we can just hold on for this little bit longer, we might be able to claim a fantastic victory at the start of the season. Liverpool go forward. Graven Birch. Even they have a interesting Dutch contingent now. We're still trying to move ours out. As we are under the Simsi managerial era rather than the Ten Hag. Diaz breaks away. What a signing he has been. Martinez chops him up. Apparently the ref is going to say there's nothing too malicious in that. Uh, sort of stumbled on into him. Didn't really chop him down, if anything. Oh, wow. It wasn't a free kick for Liverpool. What? Oh, I'll take that any day. Manchester United are going to get the free kick on this one. Frankie de Jong trying to slip through Rashi. Oh, wow. Danso with the interception. And we just need this timer to run out. Carver Howe goes forward. The former Real Madrid fullback. Ball in from Gakpo. Courtois with the big save. And Liverpool are denied late. We managed to pick up a really good victory, 3-1 against Liverpool. Match against Burnley now. We go on out and draw against them, 1-1. Braithwaite and Fernandez with the goal. Now, would you believe it? Speaking of Bruno Fernandez, Chelsea have agreed to pay a whopping £287 million for his services. And... I can't seem to renegotiate a contract with him. The board has confirmed that Bruno Fernandes will be sold in this series. He's 30 years of age now, turning 31. His market valuation is $139 million. If we were to get an offer normally, $180 million was probably what I was going to accept. That is a ridiculous amount, $300 million. But I would nearly keep him because he's the captain and he's like such a crucial player player in this team. He's our attacking midfielder. Now, I can't negotiate a contract, and that is why 
ultimate difficulty is so, so hard. So Bruno Fernandes will be a Chelsea player if this deal goes through, which is incredibly uh, disappointing. There's nothing I can do about it. And because we are playing on strict transfers, that means we can never negotiate with Chelsea for any one of their players in the future. So unless his contract expires, it looks like Chelsea, unbelievably, are going to spend so much money on him. As we go into the Manchester derby, which looks like to be Fernandez's last game, we can only wish for an injury. Because if he does get injured, Bruno... He will be ineligible. And he, there also might be a chance that he the, the uh, transfer might go off. But Bruno Fernandes looks like he will be a Chelsea player in Season 3, which is absolutely shocking that the board has done that to me. But it's a massive offer. I wonder if Manchester United in real life would probably accept that. They probably would. Ball in from Rashi. Header straight at Edison. But two very, very crucial fixtures which could decide our Champions League and top four this season. A win against Liverpool and a win against Man City would be massive. But having 289 million in cash, we're basically getting our transfer budget again. We're going to need a new attacking midfielder. But we also might be able to go out and bring in that fullback. Like, what else? What do you do with that money? I guess you just spend it rather than saving it. You're putting yourself at a disadvantage otherwise. But anyway, Marcus Rashford manages to step up just before the 45th. And he's already having a really strong start to the season. But will those goals and opportunities draw up? As in this career series, Bruno Fernandes is more than likely the best attacking midfielder in the game. But Rashford takes his goal well. And he has developed into a solid out-and-out -out striker at 92 overall. He was playing a lot on the wing in that first season, but I would nearly recommend everyone that Rashford should play as a striker. He's kind of insane. Two goals in three matches. Starting off superbly well. Second half now, Flavic on the inside to Rashford and scores a brilliant brace in this Manchester derby. He is well and truly off and running. And if we keep this up, we might be able to make a claim for a early title run. Two nil up, Manchester United recycling the football at the back, looking to build up another attack against Man City. Flavic holds up the ball brilliantly, finds Frankie De Jong, who hits it off the post, and would you believe it? It's Marcus Rashford there to snatch the goal. He gets a hat trick just before the 70th minute, particularly that follow up. Was a little bit fortunate. I don't know if he deserved it overly that much. But he gets the goal nonetheless. Pep Guardiola, furious. Definitely living up to the name. Pep Fraudiola. <laughs> and we're smashing them here. Man City go forward. First real attack. As United try and build it out from the back. And try and create another counter-attack. Man City pushing way too many players forward. Bruno Fernandes goes up the other end. Finds Reese James, an unlikely scorer. But he does pick up little goals here and there. He picks up number four. And has well and truly put this match to bed. Manchester United four to Manchester City's nil. And we're keeping our board confidence alive and potentially are holding off a sacking. Great team play from the boys. Ultimately, a great goal.
Just want to try and ideally hold on to this clean sheet for Courtois. But Man City go forward and unfortunately break it from a nice couple of combos from Kovacic to Alvarez. I do quite like the signing of um, Kovacic to Manchester City. Very, very smart. Premier League proven. Former Galactico. Chelsea Champions League winner. Just a solid midfielder all up. Man. Kovacic was like meant to be the next... <laughs> uh, Modric, wasn't he? For Real Madrid, but... Unfortunately... For Madrid fans, he uh, ultimately went to Chelsea. And is now a Premier League legend. United go up the other end, trying to nullify that goal. But as things stand, it looks increasingly likely that it's just going to be a 4-1 conclusion. As the ball goes out and the full-time whistle gets blown. So, unfortunately, with that draw against Burnley, which is really disappointing. But Marcus Rashford with a hat-trick after seven attempts. And a win against Liverpool and a win against Manchester City shows Manchester United in Season 3 are absolutely serious for this series in Season 3. And uh, are keeping my job alive, quite frankly. Now, it's transfer deadline day. And if things keep on going like this... We are going to have have 300 million pounds to spend. So let's see if this deal goes through. Unfortunately, Tony Cruz doesn't look like he's going to be going to Wolves. That deal has fallen through. Arsenal launch a bid. Casemiro, Chelsea, PSG, Man City are inquiring. Tony Cruz to Aston Villa is on the cards. Alvarez to Bayer Leverkusen. But unfortunately, Bruno Fernandes has been sold. There's nothing I can do about it. I tried to do the contract glitch, but because we're playing on ultimate difficulty, because we're playing on strict tra transfers, the board has gone over my head, which sometimes happens, and has fully blocked this deal from going. So we're going to get 288 million, and we need to splash some of the cash. So we need an attacking midfielder. Um, who do we get? Let me know in the comment section down below and we'll try and sign them for season three episode two coming out the exact same time tomorrow uh we could go with a cheaper option i don't i don't even know if the best attacking midfielder in the world is probably worth that much so we actually might be able to get like two three players potentially for what it's worth so a couple of options here musalia uh jude bellingham florian verts um that's just a couple but uh, let me know in the comments, attacking midfielders. Um, we probably could strengthen left back wise, and we actually arguably could bring in a striker <laughs> just as a backup. Um, we could potentially go for someone like Enzo Fernandez. Um, that's another thing. Or maybe Bruno Gimares, um, and maybe move Frankie de Jong or Tonali forward. But anyway, unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more. EAFC Manchester United content and uh, I can't wait to share and play season three we are still yet to win a Premier League and Champions League so hopefully we can do that in this season but over two years we have won three cups and have an abundance of runners-up medals anyway thanks for watching guys my name has been Simpsy make sure to take care of yourselves have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one cheers